Hey guys, it's Deed with Creative Retreat Kits. Thanks for joining us on the YouTube channel today. And thank you to all of you who have been encouraging us throughout the month of August. The Faith Art Box is beautiful. And if you haven't seen it yet, let's just do a really quick reveal. Julie Bragg Cassell wrote the devotion and the reflection questions for this month. The theme is Child of the One True King and what it means to be adopted into the family of royalty. And so we have things like these seals and these pretty flowers on the stamp set, kind of giving you this semblance of princess and this permanence in being sealed to God. And uh, it's, not, it's not anything that's going anywhere, it's official. So we have some pretty florals on the backing of the devotion as well as the bows and it all coordinates it's all cohesive there's these different shades of pinks and blues that go really really well together I'm just really I'm really excited to see what you guys create I'm excited to begin this process I can hardly wait the other thing that I've done is gone back again and um, filtered through to find some alphas word fitty other stickers that might coordinate pretty well with the kit I may or may not use these but at least I know if I need something not on the August Faith Art Box sticker sheet. I can reach out and grab it. The other thing that I've learned to do is to kind of corral some things that might help aid in the creative process. Sometimes it's very daunting to begin a process and if you have some things already put together with similar coloring and shapes and you know these wonderful tools like stencils at your disposal, that can help get your creative juices flowing a little bit faster and then it feels like you're actually able to worship through your creativity. Activity. So I've gathered some washies from uh, many different walks of life, <laughs> like things that I've purchased a long time ago and things that I've just recently acquired, as well as some acrylic paints. And the ones that I've been using lately are from Color Theory and Studio Calico. And I love Color Theory. Anyway, that's going to help me with my process today. I'm in Exodus chapter three and four because the context is child of the one true king. But the first thing that I wanted to do was establish why that matters and what that means and how it is that it impacts our lives being a child of God. Now you know I love acrylic paints and so I've gone and found some gold to lay down because the first thing that I'm doing is establishing in my Bible this idea of royalty, this idea of the one true king. And So I've laid down some acrylic paints doing the card technique and then what I want to do is something a little bit different and I've never done this before but it was really exciting to try and I'm hoping that you guys will give it a go as well because it seems a little bit intimidating. However, when I got going it was was really really fun and it added the effect that I was going for. So what I've done is I've grabbed the cross stencil from Creative Retreat Kits and then I have laid down that ink and then covered it with the embossing powder in the shape of a cross. Once I'm done doing that, knock the excess powder off and then heat gun that thing and hopefully I will have some very sparkly three-dimensional crosses on my page. And I do this a couple of times. The process can be intimidating, but after you try it and after you try it again and again, I think it becomes more relaxing to try to do something like embossing powders. The good thing about embossing powders is that it's not permanent until you add the heat tool to it. And so when I lay these crosses down, if I don't like the placement or if I don't like the position, if I don't like how splotchy and weird they look, then I don't have to keep that. I can brush away the embossing powder and I can start over using the embossing pen. So it's really nice that I have that freedom to kind of figure things out before I make something permanent in my Bible. So while I'm finishing up the portion of this process, I just want to share with you guys a little bit of what God laid on my heart. And it's not something that I took very lightly because I consider myself a child of God. I am a child of the one true King. I sing about it all the time. I love the song. I think it's very catchy and I think it holds some remarkable truths. However, I think the biggest part of being a child of God is not who I am, but rather who God is. I think a lot of misconceptions can happen if you just label yourself as a child of God without actually knowing the implications of being a child of God. And it's not that it's a very confusing matter, it's just that if you're going to call yourself a child of the one true king, it probably behooves us, <laughs> if I could say that, um, to study out who this one true king is. And that's why I ended up in Exodus. 
There are little tiny details that God puts out throughout scripture that help us understand his love, his person, his character, what he means for us, his purpose, his drive, his motives, and things like that. And I love how he details things in a way that we can understand. I've read this passage of scripture many times. I love this passage of scripture, but it never stood out to me before how he would insert in there in Exodus 3, those who sought your life are dead. We have this back and forth with Moses and God, and he's saying, those people who are after you, they're gone, they're mortal, they are dust, they're inside the belly of the earth, you know, that type of thing. And it occurred to me that he was not only helping Moses to have confidence in what he was about to do and what God was calling him to do next, it's, it's it's much bigger than that. I think the scope is so much greater because Moses feared Pharaoh and God is saying, you don't have to fear Pharaoh. Pharaoh is not God on earth. Yes, he had this enormous God complex and of course he had all of these surrounding forces and he was into witchcraft and heavy magician stuff and you know all that type of yuckiness, but he is still flesh and he still came from dust and to dust he returned. And Pharaoh is not the only one with the God complex, right? I mean, we read in Daniel about King Nebuchadnezzar and how he makes these outlandish statements about being God on earth and mighty over everything. And then God meets him and basically changes him into this wild, crazed beast. And so here we are, we've got a battle of the sovereigns and it's going to be an interesting battle because God is going to show himself miraculously above Pharaoh, above Pharaoh's gods, above Pharaoh's forces, even above Pharaoh's heart. I've embossed the king stamp there in chapter four. And to me, that just says, my God wins, (laughs) my king is bigger. Something I've started doing, and you guys are probably way ahead of me on this, is this blending gradient technique using these liquid chalk edgers. Simply, I take two shades of a color and I start at the edges with one shade and then work towards the middle with the other shade. And that kind of gives a nice little gradient feel and I like the texture it gives. I like the variety and the contrast. I've done this in several of my pages. I don't know if this is how you're supposed to use liquid chalk edgers, but I do it and I like it. It's it's playtime. A lot of stuff has been said about identity and I want to get into that into my next video about the identity of someone who is in God but I think before I go there I would like to first establish that God is God and what that means is much bigger than I think we even understand God is the one and only sovereign of the world He has all things in his hand. He has all things under control. And in his mercy and his grace, he allows us to find him. He allows us to explore avenues until we find him. He allows us to go through things that draw us to himself. Nothing escapes his attention. Nothing is beyond his control. Nothing has happened that has not first been passed through the throne. Um, He has to okay it in order for it to happen. And anything that does happen is always for his purpose, for his glory, for his good pleasure. And we can understand a little bit more about who he is with the basic knowledge that everything that he does is for good. Everything that we read from the beginning of scripture to the very end is for God's glory and it is for his purpose that he allows everything to happen like this back and forth between Pharaoh and Moses, between the Israelites and Moses. Everything that happens is completely orchestrated and worked out by the sovereign will of the Lord. It's important for us to have that foundation before we try to extract who it is that we are, we first need to understand who he is. And I always find it interesting, the information that I read in the Jesus Bible. I'm on page 90 where it's talking about I am. First of all, it's talking about God and it says, he is and always will be. He owes nothing and no one for his existence. Rather, he is the supreme, uncreated, sovereign, and sole God of the universe. All things owe their being to him. 
Jesus used this same name to declare his identity during his earthly ministry. While the people argued about the relationship of Jesus to the promises God made to Abraham, Jesus defied their understanding by declaring that he is not merely one in a long line of those whom God uses, rather he is the I am, and it says that in John 8:58. The immense nature of this claim caused many to attempt to stone Jesus because they knew the implications of this term. By using this term, Jesus announced himself to be God, committing the ultimate sin of blasphemy in the minds of his Jewish audience. They simply could not comprehend that this carpenter from Nazareth could be the very Son of God in human form to whom all people owe their allegiance and worship. Exodus chapter 3 and the latter part of verse 15 says, This is my name forever, the name you shall call me from generation to generation. Wow! <laughs> this was a great study for me and so I've journaled here, My name is I Am, the one true King. And then below it I've written, Kings come and kings go, one and only one has remained through the ages. The one who is self-existent, self-sufficient, omnipresent, omniscient, and almighty. This God is the King. My King is my God. When they ask me his name, I will tell them. I hope this has encouraged you. I hope it's blessed you. Much love you guys. God bless.